Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Welcome to another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about five breaks that slow down your business growth. Five breaks that get you screeching to a halt and cause you to lose momentum, lose steam, spin your wheels. And frankly, there are two different ways to accelerate your business. One is to press on the accelerator. The other is to let off the brakes. So I want, I want to highlight these five brakes because it's a lot easier to let off the brakes than it is to burn more fuel and increase the RPM by pressing on the throttle. Yes, throttling up is always a good thing, but if we can let off the brakes, it just makes for so much more flow, so much more fun, so much more fulfillment and getting you more results with less time, energy, effort, and effort, or rather less time, energy, and effort, and money is always a good thing. So I wanna just highlight these because these are big speed bumps that can really hold you back from the fullness of what you're capable of, the fullness of what you wanna create and manifest in 2021 and beyond. So let's dive into it, shall we? The first break that I wanna highlight is what I call stinking thinking stinking thinking. And really, it's a funny term, but it's actually the single biggest reason why people stay stuck in the muck and mire of mediocrity is that they never get their mindset leveled up in congruence and in sync with the champion level ambition that they want to create in their life. So they have champion level ambitions. But if you have chump level thinking and chump, chump level uh, energetic frequency that you're transmitting, you're going to get chomp level results. And what's sad about that is we're all made by greatness for greatness. We all have unlimited potential potentiality. We all have unlimited capacity and capability to step into an unlimited level of success and impact and contribution and service to the world and success and significance for yourself and your family. So we all have unlimited potentiality, but what limits our potentiality is our thinking. You know, it reminds me of the story that guy, uh, the guy who was walking by a circus fairgrounds and he noticed these beautiful, magnificent, grandiose elephants. And he was just in awe of how beautiful they were and how big they were. And then he noticed something rather odd. He noticed that they were fastened by just a small rope tied to one of their legs. And it made him wonder, how is it that these massive beasts are held back by such a small rope, no chains, no cages? So out of curiosity, he walked over a little closer and noticed there was a trainer nearby. Went up to the trainer and said, sir, I just noticed your amazing elephants. And I was curious because they're fastened by this small rope. How is it that they don't break free? Obviously they can, why don't they? He said, well, it's a great question, sir. The reason for that is because when they're much younger and much, much smaller, we train them, we condition them with a small rope. And at that time, it's enough to hold them. But as they get older and bigger and more powerful, we condition them through stronger and stronger rope and then chains that they can't break free until they stop even trying. And the man was amazed because these massive beasts could break free from their bonds at any time, but because they believed they couldn't, they never even tried. And how many of us, like elephants, remain bound by these invisible bonds, these invisible chains, these invisible ropes that we could break free from at any time if we just simply choose to step into a bigger image, a bigger vision of ourselves and what we're capable and worthy of in our lives. And so stinking thinking is just false belief, belief about what we believe we're capable and worthy of. Case in point, I was just talking with one of my Champions Club members last week, and he was talking about how he needs to set realistic goals, because if he doesn't, he's going to set himself up for failure. Well, what does failure mean? Failure means that I reach for this successful outcome here and I fall short. And that would mean I'm not good enough. That would mean I failed. Now with a belief like that, what's the likelihood you can feel like a failure? 
pretty freaking high, right? Because it's so easy to feel like a failure. In order to feel like a failure, all you have to do is shoot for a big goal and fall short. And that sucks because no one likes to feel like a failure. But who came up with that rule? I asked him, I said, so who came up with the rule that failure means that if you set a big goal and you fall short, you're failing? He said, I don't know. Isn't that just the truth? Well, if it was the truth, that would mean that everyone on planet Earth believed that. Does everyone on planet Earth, does 7 billion people believe that? And he's like, no. So is it possible there's other rules, there's other beliefs around failure such that it would be harder to feel like a failure and easier to feel like a success? He's like, yeah, I suppose so. So what if failure doesn't mean that you shoot high and you miss? What if failure means that you don't even bother shooting high? What if failure means that you don't learn anything? You're not growing, you're stagnating. What if failure means that you set mediocre, realistic goals that have you stuck in the muck and mire of mediocrity? What if that's failure? He's like, wow, there's a novel concept. All of a sudden, it was like he popped open spiritually, emotionally, mentally, where he realized, wow, I've been living in bondage of my own making. And so many of us live in bondage of our own making, in a prison of our own making, where we don't believe that you know, we can earn double or triple or quadruple our current income without having to work double or triple or quadruple the hours. If you believe that getting to double or triple your income means you have to double or triple your workload, what's the likelihood you're ever going to go for that dream? Chances are never, right? If you believe that money is the root of all evil, what's the likelihood you're ever going to allow yourself to have abundance in your life? Slim to none. Why? Because you don't want to be the root of evil. If you believe that it's greedy to have more than you need, what's the likelihood you're ever going to get rich? Chances are never. But the truth is people who step into their calling and their greatness, people who step into their God calling and step into their God purpose and step into the full potential of what they know they're capable of and really step into the best version of themselves, realize that money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. And that the best way to help the poor is not be one of them. So it's a different paradigm, a different perspective on the same thing, such that you're able to step into expansive energy. You're able to step into the fullness of elevated emotions like peace, power, poise, gratitude, passion, purpose. And those belief systems that shackle you get you doing the opposite. They get you slipping into fear. And I had these stinking thing and beliefs about myself that held me back from showing up and shining and bringing my best and doing my best. And I lived small. I was pulling punches and I was half stepping because I was looking at myself with a flawed concept, a concept of inadequacy, a concept of not enoughness. And that held me back for a long time until I pulled those weeds out of my garden and realized, wait a second here, I'm made by greatness for greatness. God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with me. And I started to step into the fact that I was fearfully and wonderfully made, knit in my mother's womb for a special plan and a special purpose. And when I started to purge out those weeds of falsehood and started to plant seeds of truth, all of a sudden it set me free. And the same thing goes for you guys. When you replace those lies with the truth, when you replace that stinking thinking, with a new truth that sets you free, a new truth that empowers you, a new truth that aligns with your dreams and your goals. Anything's possible. And that's when you can step into your champion self and make your dream real. Does that make sense, guys? So that's the first break is stinking thinking. Let's get into the second one. The second break is paper pushing. You and I both know you're going to make a lot more money making it rain, attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive, asking for referrals, reaching out to your past clients to get repeat and referral business than you'll ever make just pushing paper around your desk. If you're caught up in the muck and mire and you know the mountain of minutia, putting out fires, dealing with low level issues, you'll make a living. But if you find a way to delegate that crap to proficient paper pushers so that you can be liberated into power profit mode, you'll make a fortune. So that is a huge break because if you're under the muck and mire of paper pushing all day, every day, it's going to hugely screech on the brakes in your business because there's only so much money you can make working in your business. If you work in your business, you'll make a living. If you work on your business, you'll make a fortune. 
So you want to liberate yourself from paper pushing so you can spend more time in power profit mode because one minute spent in paper pushing mode means one minute less that you could be spending in power profit mode, making it rain and pushing the needle on profit and performance in your business, attracting new clients, attracting new referral partners and filling your pipeline with new opportunities. So that's the second uh, break is paper pushing. You want to make sure that you're working with a company that has top notch in-house proficient first class processing so you can just take the initial docs to take the initial application package it up pass it on and not have to worry about it and rest assured that your commission is locked in and if it's not you need to be considering moving to another company because your company should be supporting you in that to be liberated into rain making instead of paper pushing the third break out of the five breaks i want to share with you today is weak marketing Weak marketing. So weak marketing means you don't know how to create a compelling, unique value proposition that attracts top producing realtors. You don't know how to target those top producing realtors. You don't know the words that work to book appointments with them like a hot knife through butter. You don't know how to create that value proposition where you're able to actually deliver on those promises, under promise, over deliver, and have them stick to you like super glue because you become irreplaceable and indispensable such that they make you their exclusive partner. So if you don't know how to do that, then you're doing it the hard way. That's what I call the symptom of weak marketing. Same thing with your database. If you have a database of past clients, if you're not getting two or three deals per month for every 100 past clients, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. That's the result of weak marketing. So you end up leaving all this money on the table, hemorrhaging opportunity and working longer and harder for less. That is the symptom of weak marketing. So it's really important that you understand the single most profitable, most potently uh, profit producing activity in your business is and always will be marketing, not paper pushing, not being a mortgage technician, marketing. And until and unless you own that as the most profitable activity and you make it a, a priority in light of the fact that it's the most profitable activity in your business, you're always going to fall short of your full potential. So it's really mission critical you understand what business you're in. You're not in the mortgage business, you're in the marketing business. And the sooner you embrace that and live your daily agenda in light of that, the sooner your income will explode and the sooner you'll step into prosperity, abundance, and freedom. Let's move on. Let's talk about the fourth break that holds so many mortgage professionals back from the full potential and for, from success and that is weak systems. So weak systems is the undergirding technology, automation, policy, procedure, protocol that undergirds your business. If your systems is your what's in your head, if your systems are the stuff that you have to regurgitate every time to tell your team, if your systems is just you and you're the chief cook and bottle washer, you don't have any of it written down, you don't have any of it, any of it delineated, you don't have a process that's delineated step-by-step step in writing, then you don't have a business, you have a glorified job. And if you have a glorified job, you're trading time for money. You're trading time for money, which means if you go on vacation, you're not getting paid. If you take time off, you're not getting paid. You are imprisoned by your business. Weak systems keep you in bondage, trading time for money on the time for money treadmill. Something tells me you didn't get in this business to be in bondage, being a slave to your business, having a business enslave you. Screw freaking that. You're in this business to have freedom, true or not true. So if you want freedom, you need kick-ass systems that set you free so that your business works without you like a finely oiled machine in your absence. You want systems for marketing. You want systems for operations. You want systems for recruiting if you're building a team. You want systems for communicating with your team. You want systems for training your team. And the turnkey plug-and-play campaign systems policy, procedure, and protocol they need to build a real business that actually sets them free. And so that's the fourth break is low systems, which is really going to hold you back because you don't really have a real business until you have those systems in place. And last but not least, the fifth break is weak support. Weak support. And this is perhaps one of the biggest reasons why people hire us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com. Because again, there's sales manager, 
or their company owner can't give them what they don't have. Now there's different elements of support. There's marketing support. There's coaching support. There's that leadership support that leads by example. There's operational support. There's processing support. So there's a lot of different dimensions of support, but you need to know that you don't need to settle for substandard support. If you're in a place right now that doesn't have what you need, there are companies that can bring you first class, world class support in those areas that matter. So you can be liberated to dance in your strengths. The whole point of having excellent support is to support you to step into the best version of yourself, to operate in your zone of genius, your circle of competence, and to be released out of your weakness and into your strength, to dance in your strengths. If you don't feel like you're being supported in that, and you're constantly being sucked into your weak weakness with paper pushing, weakness with procrastination, weakness with copywriting when you don't know how to do copywriting, weakness with coming up with content, we don't know what content to come up with, that's all holding you back. That's putting the brakes on in your business. And again, that's a big reason why people hire us. So they don't get you know, ensnared or uh, held back by those weaknesses. So if you're listening to this right now, you're watching this right now, you're like, Dorn, I'm definitely picking up what you're laying down. Uh, several of those breaks are definitely impacting my business. They're definitely slowing me down. I feel it. I know it. I just don't know how to release those breaks. I've been struggling with this for a few weeks, a few months, a few years. I need to learn how to release those breaks and learn how to push the throttle, push on the gas more in my business. If that's you and you're on 100% commission, you eat what you kill with no safety net and you're on an 80 basis points or higher comp plan and you wanna learn how to double or triple your income while working less hours and to be able to have more fun and flow and less stress and less striving and more stepping into your power with peace and poise and gratitude and joy. If you wanna learn how to not just achieve to be happy, but more importantly, happily achieve. And you want to be able to do that where you're pouring gasoline on the fire in your strengths, gasoline on the fire in your certainty and your confidence. And you want to be able to just get straight to what work, easy for me to say, go straight to what works without messing around doing it the hard way. Then I invite you to book a breakthrough call with myself or one of my consultants. We'll lift up the hood on your business and we'll look, we'll look at what's working in your business right now. What's not working in your business right now? Where are you now and where do you want to be? And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business and crush your goals and make your dream a reality, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, we will be the very first to advise you to pass on our services. Either way, though, you'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. We'll just hop on the phone. We'll have a real talk conversation. We'll have an honest conversation. And if we can support you in your dream, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass. Cool? So again, book the call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com. So thanks for listening. We just covered the five breaks that hold you back, that slow down your business, and how to avoid them. I trust you got some distinction and some valuable takeaways. So make sure you avoid those breaks. Make sure you learn how to maximize your momentum and push on the gas, but also release those breaks. It'll make your business a whole lot more fun and a whole lot more profitable. This is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Be blessed, and we'll talk to you on the next episode. Peace.